Okay, we've got this physics question from the mid-semester exam. Now, we've got a softball of mass 250 grams is thrown at an initial velocity of 16 metres a second at an angle theta to the horizontal. When the ball reaches its maximum height, its kinetic energy is 16 joules. Now, this is going to be quite important. So it says, what is the maximum height achieved by the ball from its point of release? Now, there are so many different ways you can do this. Now, the quickest method that you'd want to do in an exam style situation is you want to use the initial velocity of the ball and its kinetic energy at its maximum point. Now, what we can do is we can use the initial velocity of the ball to find out what the initial kinetic energy that the ball had when it, I don't know, released whoever threw it or whatever. Now, the kinetic energy formula EK is one half mv squared. Now, this is equal to one half. Now the mass or m is in kilos, so this is going to, have to be two zero point two five kilos. And its velocity is 16. Meters a second. Okay, so what we've got here is we have a half times a quarter, which is an eighth, and 16 squared is 256. So we have 200. 56 over 8. And 256 is 2 to the power of 8. 8 is 2 to the power of 3, so 2 to the power of 5, which is 32. Now, you could have quite easily done that with a calculator. I just have misplaced mine right now. So, we know that the initial kinetic energy of the ball was 32 joules and its final kinetic energy or well its kinetic energy at its highest point was 16 joules. So because of the law of the conservation of energy, the energy lost here, so the kinetic energy lost in this situation will have to equal the potential energy that's gained. Now, kinetic energy is energy that's based on movement or kinetics. So it's directly related to the square of velocity. Now, potential energy is it's the potential to have movement. So basically, this is dependent directly on an object's height. So the energy kinetic loss is going to be equal to the energy potential gained. That's the conservation of energy law. So we can see that the kinetic energy lost is 32 minus 16, which is just 16. So the energy potential that's gained is going to equal Sixteen joules. Cool. Now we know that energy potential is equal to mgh. So we know the mass of the ball in kilos is zero point two five. The acceleration due to gravity is nine point eight, and the height is what we're going to determine. So its maximum height, therefore, is going to be equal to 16 divided by 0 0.25 times 9.8.
Now some people use 10, some people use 9.81. It doesn't really matter. So the height then is going to equal approximately 6.53. meters. Now that's above the ground. Now, it says calculate the initial vertical velocity of the ball. Now, the way we're going to do this is we're going to, we know that when we're at the ball's maximum height, I'll draw a little diagram on the side here. If we have a parabola, so here's the ground, something goes like this. At the highest point or the maximum height, the vertical component of the ball or the projectile's motion is always equal to zero. So velocity vertical is equal to zero. Okay. And so all we have is a component of the ball's velocity that goes in this direction. So like the horizontal velocity. So it's all VH. Now, we know that it's we can calculate that at the point of release it's horizontal component of its velocity is going to be equal to the horizontal component of velocity at the maximum point because horizontal velocity assuming no wind resistance does not change from when the ball is released to when it hits the ground again so what we can do is we can say if it's at its maximum height, if its kinetic energy is 16 joules, we can say that at its point of release, the horizontal component of the ball's velocity is going to be create a kinetic energy of also 16 joules. So we can figure out what velocity is going to be required to give with this ball to give a kinetic energy of 16 joules okay so what we'll do is I'll just quickly change color so we have this kinetic energy so that was oh sorry that was a now this is going to be B so we have a kinetic energy of 16. And that's equal to the mass, 0 0.25, divided by 2, because it's half mv squared. Then we times that by v squared. Okay, so what we can do now is we can just rearrange this. We can go 16 times 2 which is 32, then this is, then we're going to divide it by 0 0.25, which is like timesing it by 4, so that's going to just equal 128. So we have 128. So V will equal the square root of 128 which is equal to 64.8 square root 2 or a less precise answer 11.3 Okay, so that's the 
a horizontal component of the ball's velocity. Now, the vertical component, what we could actually do is we can just almost, well, not almost, using Pythagoras, we can, we know what this component is now. Now what we can do is using Pythagoras, we can just find this component. So, we know that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So we can use b squared is equal to c squared minus a squared. So in this case, x squared is going to equal 16 squared minus 8 square root 2 squared. Now 16 squared, we said that before was 256. 8 root 2 squared, well root 2 squared is 2. 8 squared is 64. 2 times 64 is 128. So x squared is 256 minus 128, which is equal to 128. So x will have to be equal to as well 8 square root 2 meters a second. Now let me just write, make sure my units are on there. So the answer to part B is the initial vertical velocity of the ball is equal to 8.2 meters per second. Now, the last one is quite an easy one to go through, to be honest. Part C is we're asked, what is the value of theta? Now, we've got 16 meters a second, which has been broken down into two um, velocities in the x and y plane, or the x and y plane, or the vertical and the horizontal. These two components of the initial velocity are identical. Now when you have an opposite and adjacent side to an angle that are identical, we know that the tan of 45 degrees is equal to 1. And so if you were to go opposite over adjacent, 8 root 2 divided by 8 root 2, that would equal 1. So we know that phi theta is going to equal 45 degrees.